Let us pray in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O Jesus, through the immaculate heart of Mary, I offer you my prayers, works, joys and sufferings on this day for all the intentions of your sacred heart in union with the holy sacrifice of the Mass throughout the world in reparation for my sins, for the intentions of all my relatives and friends, and in particular for the intentions of the Holy Father. Amen. Let us pray for the intentions of the Holy Father for the month of September, for the cry of the earth. We pray that each one of us will hear and take to heart the cry of the earth and of victims of natural disasters and climatic change and that all will undertake to personally care for the world in which we live. Our Father who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. My dear friends, as we gather in the presence of the Lord, as we begin this new day, first and foremost, let us thank the Lord for giving us this opportunity to spend this time with Him. Let us also thank the Lord for waking us up this morning, for giving us a good night's rest for keeping us safe and sound and most importantly for giving us good health of peace and mind. But we see that many a times we are caught up with our own busy schedule and because of this we sometimes tend to forget or sometimes we don't see the presence of the Lord in our lives. The Lord works in our lives through various ways through events, through people, through situations, etc. And therefore, sometimes it becomes difficult for us to understand what the Lord is trying to communicate to us. Sometimes we are so caught up with our busy schedule that we don't even thank the Lord for the small things that happen in our lives. But we see that these small things are very significant because they are all part of the larger picture. And therefore today, in a very special way, let us begin by thanking the Lord for various things that He has done for us, that He is doing for us and that He will continue to do in the future. First and foremost, let us thank the Lord for the gift of life. And therefore, Lord, we thank you for giving us our talents, abilities and various capacities through which we can grow and at the same time reach out to others and make a difference in their lives. At the same time, Lord, we also thank you for the gift of our family members, friends, relatives, near and dear ones, and all those who play a very important role in our lives. We see that all these individuals have in some way or the other influenced us, and we are who we are because of them. It has become an important aspect of our life and therefore we see that it is their hard work and dedication 
that has enabled us to grow in life. Lord, we also want to thank you for the opportunities that you have given us, opportunities to grow as well as opportunities to make a difference in the lives of others. Lord, we also thank you for the experiences that you have given us. On many occasions, there have been good experiences which we all remember and cherish. But there are also those experiences which are difficult. We also thank you, Lord, for those tough experiences which have taught us many things in life. These tough experiences have made us stronger and have helped us to learn things in life. And therefore, Lord, we also continue to pray for all those who have asked us to pray for them. And, and at this time in the morning offering, we also offer up their prayers, people whom we may know, those who may have asked us to pray for them. And let us close our eyes at this moment. And let us take this opportunity to thank the Lord. Let us praise the Lord for giving us good health, for keeping us in His love. We see that at every moment His gaze is on us. He loves us and therefore He is keeping a watch. He protects us at every step of the way. The Lord never abandons us. When we are in difficulties, when we are faced with challenges, it is He who helps us, who gives us the strength to overcome those challenges. And therefore, Lord, we thank you and praise you. And Lord, we ask you that whatever we may do today, you may remain with us, you may show us the way that our words, deeds and actions may in a way reflect your love, mercy and joy to the world around us. And therefore, my dear friends, let this day be a day of joy and blessings in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And in a way, we see that today we shall reflect on Psalm 55. As usual, we shall have a general overview of the psalm and then we shall take a look at the psalm in detail, verse by verse. Now, Psalm 55 we see is a psalm of lament that is attributed to David and this psalm expresses his distress and despair in the face of betrayal by a close friend. And in today's world, we see that this is quite an emerging theme since everyone is becoming individualistic and because of the competitive nature of today's world, betrayals are quite common and therefore those who have been through this experience will be able to relate to what David feels in this Psalm 55. Now the Psalm is structured in three parts. First part is a plea for God's help that is verses 1 to 8. Then you have a description of the situation that has caused the distress of David and this we find in verses 9 to 15. And finally, we have a renewed plea for God's help and a declaration of trust in the God. And this happens in verses 16 to 23. And therefore, overall, Psalm 55 expresses David's distress. And this psalm highlights the importance of turning to God in times of troubles and also expressing one's fear and anxieties to him. We know that the Lord is always there. He protects us, He guides us and therefore it is important for us to turn to Him. In times of difficulties, in moments of distress, tell Him what is happening to us and He will be there to guide us and save us. And therefore the psalm also expresses hope and confidence that come from trusting God's faithfulness and justice even in the face of betrayal and deceit. And therefore, let's take a look at this psalm in the three parts as we have mentioned earlier. Now, in the first part of the psalm, David pleads for God's help in his distress. And in verses 1 to 3, we see that David asks God to hear his prayer and not to ignore his cry for help. And therefore, David expresses 
his fear and anguish. In verse 4, he says that his heart is in anguish within him and the terrors of death have fallen upon him. In verses 5 to 8, David then goes on to describe his desire to escape from his troubles, asking God to give him wings like a dove so that he can fly away and find rest. Moving on to the second part of the psalm, we see that David describes the situation that has caused this distress and the cause is the betrayal by a close friend. So in verses 9 to 11, David laments the treachery of his friend whom he has trusted and confided in. But we see that this friend of David has turned against him. And therefore in verses 12 to 15, David describes the violence and deceit of his enemies who have plotted against him and who have no fear of God. And therefore we see that in this second part when David describes the situation, I think those who have undergone such situations will be able to relate the anguish, the anxiety and the fear that one goes through in such situations. But we need to know that the Lord is with us, the Lord will be there to guide us and protect us. And finally moving on to the third part of the psalm, we see that David renews his plea for God's help and he expresses his trust in God. Now in verses 16 to 18, David calls upon God to save him and he expresses his confidence that God will surely hear his prayer. Now in verses 19 to 21, David asks God to bring judgment upon his enemies and he also expresses his confidence that God will do so because of their wickedness. And then we see in verses 22 to 23, David encourages himself to trust in God and to cast his burden upon him, knowing that God will sustain him and God will allow the righteous to be moved. Therefore, we are called to have the same faith and trust in the Lord, the same hope and confidence because the Lord never abandons us. All we need to do is have faith, have hope and trust in the Lord and He will provide, He will guide us. And therefore, when we are faced in moments of difficulties, let us turn to the Lord. And now, my dear friends, let us spend a few moments in silence, allowing this psalm to take root in us. If you have been touched by some thought or some idea that we have seen in Psalm 55, feel free to ponder and reflect on those thoughts or on those lines. And allow the psalm to take root in you so that ultimately the psalm becomes part of you and you too are able to grow in trust and confidence in the Lord. Prayer to Saint Michael the Archangel for protection. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of of the heavenly hosts by the power of God thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking 
the ruin of souls. Amen. Act of Adoration O Sacrament Most Holy, O Sacrament Divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. Saint Gertrude Prayer for Souls in Purgatory Eternal Father, I offer thee the most precious blood of thy divine Son, Jesus, in union with the masses said throughout the world today for all the holy souls in purgatory, for sinners everywhere, for sinners in the universal church, those in my own home and within my family. Amen. May the divine assistance remain always with us and may the souls of the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning is now and ever shall be world without end. Amen.